In the last video, I covered the specs for the Super Refresh, and I provided the kind of performance you can expect. But what is the real reason for bringing back the Super GPUs? And is this meant to be NVIDIA's coup de grace? Let's get into it. Last time we covered the rumored specs available, and I provided estimates of the performance improvements you could expect. This time we have the full specs for these Super GPUs. Let's look at this table from video cards, and starting with the 4080 Super, it's the same 5% increase in the amount of CUDA cores as last time. What is different is the slightly faster memory that will provide a slightly higher memory bandwidth of 2.6%. The boost clock speed gets a 50 MHz bump for an increase of 1.8%. In summary, with the 4080 Super, you get a little more shaders, a little more clock speeds, and a little more bandwidth to overall provide a little more performance. There is really nothing super about this GPU. It really should be called the 4080 Leapfrog Edition. Ribbit. Next is the 4070 Ti Super. We now have confirmation of several items. We have the same 10% increase in shaders. The memory is confirmed to be 16 gigabytes on a 256-bit bus. Moving to the 4080-like bus structure and quantity really is the highlight of this GPU. You can see the resulting memory speed stays the same while the memory bandwidth jumps 33%. This GPU will not reach the same memory bandwidth of the 4080 since it uses 21 gigabits per second memory chips versus the 4080's 22.4. Even so, the memory bandwidth is only 6.3% lower. Finally, the boost clock speed and the power remain the same. I mentioned last time that this GPU looks like a proper 80 series GPU. To show what I mean, let's overlay the RTX 3080 specs next to this one. And if I compare the specs of the 3080 to this GPU, we can see that this one has 3% fewer shaders, but a massive 60% increase in VRAM. And while the memory bus has reduced 20% from 320 in the 3080 to 256 bits, this is partially offset by the 11% increase in memory speed, which resulted in an overall reduction of only 12% in memory bandwidth. Of course, the increased L2 cache will reduce the advantage even more. It does get a whopping 63% in base clock and 53% in boost clock speeds. You could expect an overall increase of about 30%. And the improved efficiency enabled the power to reduce another 11%. Finally, a price increase of $100 is 14%. Providing a 30% uplift in performance for 14% more money doesn't sound amazing, however, when you couple that with the increase in VRAM from 10 to 16 gigabytes, much more power efficient at 285 watts, better ray tracing performance, and DLSS 3.0, that $100 increase does not seem as significant for this class of GPU. I think a great number of people and reviewers would have been much more positive on this 4080, and it would have sold very well. And while the 4090 would offer 45% more performance than this one, it would also cost 100% more. If Nvidia would have announced a GPU with these specs as the 4080 back in 2022, I would not have purchased my 3090 and went with this GPU instead. Finally, the 4070 Super. You can see that this has 22% more shaders. That's a massive jump. That is the highlight of this GPU, because after that, you can see that it has the same 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the same 192-bit bus at the same speed, giving the same 504 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. It also has the same boost clock speed, but with 10% higher power. And that increase in power will be needed for all those added shaders. Just for fun, if we take a quick look and compare the 4070 Super to the 4070 Ti, you see that the 4070 Super only has 7% fewer shaders, it has the same 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the same 192-bit bus with the same memory speed, giving the same memory bandwidth. And while the clock speeds are down, so is the power. I do wonder if you can undervolt the 4070 Super close to 4070 Ti level of performance. Now I had a 4070 Ti, and when I compared it to my 3090, I'll put links to those videos above, it was better in many ways, however, not better enough. While I did love its power efficiency, with that 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I decided to return it and keep my 3090. I also got a 4070 Founders Edition on launch day. I really liked that 4070 for the secondary small form factor build. However, that GPU was also returned. 
I returned it to get a better deal. That launch was so bad because NVIDIA overestimated demand. As an example, Micro Center opened their stores an hour early on launch day and nobody showed up. Weeks later, there were many return 4070s allowing for many open box deals. Getting an open box discount coupled with a $100 Steam gift card and I opted for this MSI Ventus version. My point is, the 4070 Ti was just too much money for what it was and the same could be said for the 4070. I covered that in great deal in a couple of previous videos, check out those if you want to learn more. The super refresh of these GPUs helps to mitigate what was wrong with the original versions. I'm still not sure I would pay $600 for a 4070 Super as the RX 7800 XT I just tested is a really compelling GPU at $500. In summary, the highlight of the 4080 Super is... Ribbit. The highlight of the 4070 Super Ti... The Super Ti 4070... The Super 4070 Ti... I hate this name. The highlight of the 4070 Ti Super is the increase in VRAM and memory bandwidth along with the increase in shaders. The highlight of the 4070 Super is the increase in shaders. Now I asked the question if this super refresh is really NVIDIA's coup de grace, otherwise known as the death blow. More specifically, is it the death blow for AMD Radeon GPUs above $500? As I talked about in my previous video, the Super GPUs seem to improve just enough to leapfrog their Radeon counterpart. And when the reviews come out, in the overall average, you can expect the 4080 Super will be just above the 7900 XT. The 4070 Ti Super will be just above the 7900 XT. And the 4070 Super will be just above the 7800 XT. With the Supers, Nvidia will effectively leapfrog the competition. And this is a very strategic move by NVIDIA in a specific segment. NVIDIA wants to be on top in any comparison. They understand they have a huge lead in Mindshare and they want to help solidify that in 2024. And with the Supers, when all the charts are showing the NVIDIA GPU is faster on average than the competition, they will continue to strengthen their Mindshare. From NVIDIA's standpoint, they are able to market their feature advantages like better ray tracing, DLSS 3.0, which is much more applicable to the higher end GPUs. And with the Supers, they will be the leader in every segment above $500. And while they may be more expensive with the mind cheer and the features, if you want the best, you have to pay more. I've spent time with many of these GPUs. And when you compare them, I can make a strong argument for AMD. Comparing the 4080 versus the 7900 XTX, the XTX is the second fastest gaming GPU in the world, has 24 gigabytes of VRAM and is under $1,000. Comparing the 4070 Ti and the 7900 XT, the XT can be had for cheaper, is an entry level 4K GPU with 20 gigabytes of VRAM, where the 4070 Ti only has 12 gigabytes. Comparing with the 4070 and the 7800 XT, the 7800 XT is faster, $100 less expensive, and has more VRAM. What about after the super refresh? That strong argument for AMD really weakens. Comparing the 4070 Super to the 7800 XT, the 4070 Super is almost a 4070 Ti for $599. And comparing the 4070 Ti Super to the 7900 XT, the 4070 Ti Super is faster, has more features for the same money, and now has enough VRAM. Comparing the 4080 Super to the 7900 XTX, the 4080 Super is now the second fastest GPU in the world with more features for more money. What do you think all the reviewers are gonna say when they do their comparisons and summary of their reviews? Will AMD have any clear victories? Getting back to the death blow, there is one rumor out there that suggests the 4080 Super price will be $999. If Jensen does that, it will be a clear signal that he intends to deliver the death blow to AMD's GPU lineup above $500. And the timing could not be better with AMD canceling high-end RDNA 4. Think about it. In 2024, the Super Refresh pushes the 7900 GPUs down a notch. Then, in 2025, with the release of the 5090, 5080, and 5070 Ti, it will push them down three more notches. AMD Radeon on the high end will be diminished in 2024 and then dead in 2025, not even in the top five. 
This is a two-year period of time where AMD Radeon Mindshare will continue to weaken, while NVIDIA's Mindshare will continue to get stronger at the most lucrative end of the GPU market. Remember, Mindshare takes several generations to build. That Mindshare advantage at the high end could last the rest of this decade. And I'm sure people are already writing in the comments below to tell me that all AMD Radeon needs to do is just drop prices next year. That will be too little too late. All the reviews will have been finalized, the bar charts completed, comparisons made, and AMD will not have any clear victories. The damage will already have been done. Just look at the 7900 XT and the 7700 XT. Nobody wants those GPUs. You really only get one chance to make a good first impression. Now others may say that RDNA 4 or Battle Mage will save the day. From the rumors of the specs I've seen, I don't think that will be the case for above the $500 market. But that may be worth looking into more deeply once the supers are released. I am not sure how AMD Radeon is going to counter the super refresh and stop the inevitable mindshare slide. The only rumored AMD GPU is for a 7600 XT, which sounds like just an overclocked 7600 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. AMD Radeon needs a quick response to the super refresh and they need some victories in the GPU segments above $500, and I don't see one coming. After just spending a weekend with a borrowed 7800 XT, I came away impressed with its performance and I also compared it to RDNA 2 with the same number of shaders and power scaling. If you'd like to see that comparison, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for when that video comes out. And if you appreciate this analytical insight into the super GPUs, leave a like as well. Also, let me know in the comments below if you think Jensen is going to deliver the death blow to AMD's Radeon's high-end GPUs by pricing the 4080 Super at $999. If you missed some of my previous content, click on one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.